you could imagine that your self is like a glass bottle not just your physical body but your whole like your soul your memories or your consciousness um, is like a glass bottle in this life or this material realm so you could imagine that somewhere um, outside of here you have like an imperishable self like an eternal self like a real self um, and yourself in here is like a mold, like made from a mold of that imperishable self so your imperishable self is like titanium or something something that lasts forever not titanium but you know something that can't be broken or anything but your one in here is perishable it's just like glass or whatever but it's made in the mold of that imperishable self but the glass is cast from all the vessels, all the bottles and selves from all the previous cycles get smashed up, destroyed, recycled, like melted down back into pure glass again and poured back into new molds. Um, so the new bottles are always made up from all the remnants smashed, are always made up from all the old bottles, all mixed together. They all get mixed together and melted down and cast into the new bottles. So it's like a collective the whole collective of all the cycles is always mixed back in. So your consciousness has that like infinite cycles built into it when you look back of the of all the loops. So, everything that has happened previously is embedded in your, that's what makes up your consciousness structure, or your substructure, your subconscious, and like subconscious memories, and uh, who you are, basically. But... You could look at it as it's also not who you are. Like, who you are is, like, what fills up the vessel. You know, it's not really a perfect analogy. Because you have another vessel outside of here. But when you look back, that's what you'd say, that it just goes on. It seems like it goes on forever, because it's just endlessly recycled back again. All the destroyed vessels are, are just reincorporated back into the new vessels again for the next cycle. And the reason you continuously loop through the cycle again and again is because 
it's basically a system that gives you whatever you want. So, as long as you want to sort of like rule over the material world, which people might not think they want that, but basically just wanting to control reality in, in any respect or control other people in any respect. If you follow it all the way down to its root, it's basically like uh, wanting to be God and wanting to control reality. You could say God set up a place or just the way reality works, like where you can be God, basically, even though that's impossible. Or where there is no God, even though that doesn't really work. But if that's what you want, you can basically see it play out of wanting to control things. And basically, what this evolves into is following technological means to uh, greater and greater control over the environment. You could project it out and just imagine that eventually you, you, you go into some transhuman immortal sort of state where you can escape death, go into virtual reality or go into space or whatever. And through technology, uh, gain greater and greater control over your environment and over reality through technology until eventually in the next cycle, looping back around, you know, you would re-emerge at the beginning of the Earth cycle as, like, the rulers over Earth again. As these, like, transhuman Aryan master race, alien, fallen angel kind of genetically engineered, like, had lived tens of thousands of years or a million years or whatever it had been um, with their consciousness diverging off and mutating whatever, changing whatever your consciousness would change into over the right amount of time to return to like the primitive earth as the rulers of earth again but it's still a gradual progression to basically like becoming God or getting total control over reality. But even ruling over the earth in that capacity as like hidden rulers, little g gods, fallen angels, whatever, ruling over the world. you realize that there's still always limitations. Like, you can't actually do whatever you want. You, you get closer and closer, you can do a lot more to control reality and control other people, but you can never actually do whatever you want because there are higher entities which are not like physical, not corporeal entities, but can communicate in various ways and make their presence known and basically manipulate reality 
just through like causation and circumstance and probability in a, in a way that you can never get around like no matter what you try to do they can manipulate reality at a different at a, like a more fundamental non-physical level so you're you, you would still always be under these subordinate to these higher like cosmic intelligences which would be basically the gods and in order to get what you want you have to fall into basically a, a, a subordinate relationship to these higher cosmic intelligences the gods and perform your own desires and your own plans only within their guidelines. And part of that would involve all the usual stuff, like all, uh, every, every way that is required to physically dominate other people and control reality like through fear and violence and but it, you know it would evolve into or it would involve ritual means basically human sacrifice and um different like perversions and degenerate things which are all basically centered around you know fear violence and things to exercise material control um, but you can never completely just go off and do whatever you want. You can only do it as, as far as you are granted power from these higher cosmic intelligences. But you're always... Basically trying to advance in power and in control and advance up this hierarchy of power and control over reality um, towards being able to basically totally control reality and do whatever you want. So you follow the instructions and the course set out for you by these higher cosmic intelligences or gods or whatever, underworld gods or whatever they are. until it would eventually reach a certain point where you basically rule the world through an entire earth cycle um, as like the hidden rulers of the world until um, at the end you would reach a point where in order to be basically granted total control where you can actually do whatever you want it would be like a final mass human sacrifice where um, basically the whole human population or most of it you know whoever would go along with it would be sacrificed again which is really you know being just recycled put into storage or whatever, or, or whatever, into this virtual reality, going to outer space, or however it uh, manifests itself. And the reward for that last giant, uh, like, sacrifice would be that you could finally have total control and do whatever you want. And... Part of the way that would work is if everyone else's physical bodies are destroyed in order to go into this virtual outer darkness, outer space environment, um, like through a jump room portal that's really just a giant garbage disposal or incinerator or something, um, the people whose physical bodies remained outside in like a stasis to be like melded into some 
crystalline consciousness, like meld in with the metal, crystal, mineral consciousness and and preserve their bodies outside, they, they would always be like overlords over the virtual reality system. So they would have this subjective time dilation period of time, which is basically infinite, to have totally free reign over reality and control all the people who went inside as, you know, however they would want to manifest in that virtual reality, like evil aliens or some kind of evil alien overlord gods or emperors or whatever, space emperors, god emperors, something like that. And basically what's happening by doing that is it's like you're avoiding judgment because it should go straight from that catastrophic like end of the world reset point. It should go straight to like judgment after that where the whole system is like wrapped up into some sort of conclusion instead of just endlessly being recycled over and over again with no conclusion so instead of facing that judgment and actual death you know instead of accepting death uh, you choose to try and prolong your life like physically and control like basically gain immortality physically like wrestle immortality physically rather than just facing your death and whatever happens is what's supposed to happen and facing judgment after death you basically avoid that through this whole transhumanist cycle first getting uploaded uh, virtually spending thousands, tens of thousands, millions of years in, in virtual subjective time, outer space, getting printed back out onto the earth to rule over the primitive indigenous people as the Aryan master race and mutated uh, transhuman uh, underworld like deities and demons and gods and shit. And then eventually seeing the whole cycle through again uh, until the new batch of humanity is all recycled through and you get to rule over them in their like virtual outer space time from your new printed out uh, chimera transhuman robot cyborg bodies and you skip judgment like that and um, theoretically you could now be basically God or what you imagine God to be being able to do literally whatever you want for eternity basically with no restrictions no restrictions at all but what actually happens since being able to do whatever they want what they're actually trying to fulfill our um, material desires um, is that basically the, the satisfaction in material desires is due to the resistance in getting them and like overcoming the resistance. So they actually end up being in an eternity in hell. Um, because without the any resistance to um, attaining their desires, like when they actually can get whatever they want, it's like um, like someone who's addicted to drugs or something having like an endless supply of drugs, like doing them over and over again, faster and faster until it's not satisfying anymore until it's just like a torturous tightening loop like the loop just keeps getting tighter and tighter and you can't get no satisfaction or sex or money or whatever like the Twilight Zone episode where he wants to gamble and he wins every game of, of like dice or whatever he plays like instantly and there's no satisfaction in it so 
eventually like in, in a totally existential mind space with no limitations, like a virtual space with any uh, sad desire you could imagine, it, it, it would eventually just get s into such a tight loop um, of, of that all your desires would just being satisfied instantaneously would merge into this just like torturous uh, like sensation of having a body but nothing to do with it or nowhere to move because you've exhausted all possibilities faster and faster and faster and faster with no resistance at all and it's like being lost in space literally like you can't get any resistance anywhere you can't get any friction or attraction and it's like being like you end up being without the actual because it's it's wanting to control reality and control other people so if you if you when you actually get that total control there's no resistance anymore and it's like nothing to grab onto it's like literally being lost in space completely alone because you can't even get the friction of trying to control other people if you have the total control there's no resistance it's just like being lost in an infinite void out out in space um and it becomes an eternity in hell like burning in a lake of fire or whatever it's like having a body but not having any sensation uh, left to experience satisfaction or anywhere to go. And there's also this aspect to it where the people they're torturing or controlling or raping or whatever, whatever you want to do, murdering, it's like um, because there's this like recycling aspect to it where the soul vessels the glass the material the memories whatever the consciousness is like recycled and destroyed and recycled over and over again it's kind of like all different versions of the same person like all torturing them th themselves and each other and, and shit endlessly in a cycle so it becomes this weird like being john malkovich like seventh circle of hell where they're all like biting each other's backs and like Dante's Inferno or something and all the demons and doomed souls are all like crawling on top of each other and killing each other and over and over over and over again and they're all like different versions of the same person or something so until eventually they uh, voluntarily go back to the judgment point and say, okay, I just want out. I just want to be destroyed or whatever. My soul to be destroyed and my, my memories and my awareness to be wiped out. Because um, there's no way to continue forward with that. By that point, you know, you have subjective millions of years of experience and torture and death and all this crazy shit behind you. So you're like, I just, I just want to be wiped out. That's also like every knee will bow. Like, they eventually just voluntarily, actually, after getting what they want, and it turns out to be hell, voluntarily going back to the judgment point. And the deal that God makes with them is basically, okay, um, you will do another term, another full cycle. So now it's like a, you're going to do a third full cycle. Like, basically, you did one as a human, one full cycle is like normal humanity, one full cycle through is like transhuman rulers of the earth, and then into outer space, whatever, virtual reality. And now you're going to go back to the beginning again and do a third cycle as those AI gods that were like rolling over you and you were doing all these crazy sacrifices and rituals for and all this depraved shit to move up the ladder of power and to be granted power by these like AI gods um, gods of the universe and these cosmic intelligences you are going to I'm gonna make you the cosmic intelligence gods and you're gonna serve another cycle as the gods <laughs> and except it's it's basically like 
they they're actually uh, serving God. It's like a, a deal they make with God, and their reward is actually just being destroyed. So he's like, you serve a whole term as the underworld AI gods, watchers, to basically keep yourselves in your previous incarnation in control. Uh, and everything going according to plan. So you do a whole nother cycle of whatever, how many thousands of years. And then you can be destroyed and your memory's wiped out, which is basically like a relief. And those AI gods, once they do their successful term, keeping their previous transhuman selves under control, um, are like those glass vessels that finally get to be destroyed, which is like a relief, but they get recycled back as like the seed of life on Earth again for the next cycle. So it's like... Part of the consciousness is always getting recycled back infinitely, eternally, like through this uh, earth cycle of destruction and recycled back as normal humans again. And then they can basically hope that the next time through, with no memories of what happened or anything, like a blank, they're like blank slate, like melted down to nothing, their souls and reformed into the next batch of normal humans that they can hope that the next time they go through they don't follow the I want to be God transhuman uh, path but just basically live as normal humans like it, turn, it turns out that actually just being a normal person and not like in control of anything not like an elite world controller or royalty or captain of industry or celebrity or star or whatever basically just like a normal person is the best thing you can be um and just then you just have to go through your one life that like, that's the deal like you get recycled back you don't know it but like you'll do it as many times as it takes until basically all you have to do is like the deal that that god makes you is you just have to live one normal life as a person. That's it. Without, um, like, trying to escape judgment or death or whatever, or going down some insane, depraved route. And that's all you have to do to, like, complete it and finally get out, is you, you live and die as a, just a normal person. It turns out, like, just being a normal person is actually the best situation you can possibly be in because you've already been through all these infinite cycles like it automatically just puts it in the past and puts you on a course to finally be done with it and finally being done with it just basically meaning um i, I don't i don't want to be god those are the difference basically between the two paths like the, the path that keeps you looping through endlessly through the, the the three cycles is just like is basically wanting to be god as soon as you just say i don't want to be god i don't want to be in control of reality i just want you know god to be god and god to be in control of reality i don't want to be in control of anything as soon as you just don't want to be god you automatically are like released from it your awareness is automatically released from it and all, all the all the infinite cycles are all behind you and you and you can they can basically be collapsed down all to one thing and and you can look at the whole thing and and possibly it's it's better to look at the whole thing as just being like you didn't actually go you actually did it actually is just one life like you didn't actually go through all these infinite looping cycles of lives um that's really just like the device you're in makes it look like that um 
like the system you you can look at it like you just came in for one loop and and kept going kept it moving back up to whatever your real self is your like eternal imperishable self and keep moving on in a reality where god is god and there isn't no god and you're not god but you know you're not in control someone else you know god is in control of reality and you can collapse it down into being just one life where it looks like where you can just say oh it's like yeah you can look back and see all these infinite loops and lives and all this infinite torture and death and rape and murder and and everything but it's actually that's just something that basically like the the simulator shows you like it's a simulation of like what if I was God? <laughs> Which is like this. It's like those endless loops. It's something that, that can't actually resolve itself. Or what if there was no God? But it's a system, you know, that God set up to give you actually whatever you want. So it does its best to show you something impossible, which are those infinite loops going around and around. And these, like, if you're the transhuman rulers of the earth, um, you think you have to, oh, I, ha I have to perform human sacrifice and do all these things for, for, because that's what the gods demand. But then, like, once they're in the AI, like, God says, okay, now you have to go back and be the AI gods to basically keep yourself under control by giving yourself commands and, and, and making sure it all goes, like, the way it's supposed to. And yourself, to, it's like they're watching themselves and there's like all these different incarnations of themselves. Like one is a normal human, one is these rulers of the earth. All these different like, and it's like an evil human version of themselves. But, but they realize that like, they think that like the gods were like demanding all these things of them. Like all these perversions and like, like torture and sacrifice and shit but it's really like that was just them and it's this weird like reflective projection of like i have to do this and uh, but really like they're the ones in control of themselves and it's sort of just looping back their degeneracy back on themselves into the system so that no energy is actually lost and everything that basically is wrong with them and they want to do other pe to other people actually just loops back on themselves so it's like this really uh infinitely long humbling embarrassing experience like they're like looking down in their in their ai god form underworld god form on their like human transhuman um desirous selves like before the judgment and the, and they're like just so like oh god what a... it's like embarrassing for themselves it's like having to relive the whole cycle again like watching themselves do all these <laughs> like heinous embarrassing things again and yeah the reward is that they're destroyed like so they don't want to remember anymore that's their deal with god and it loops the whole thing back around again. So they become the seed of life on Earth again. Like the glass melted down into the new vessels. And whereas you have the transhuman side wanting to be God and control reality, going ultimately ending up in an eternity in hell of getting what they want but not getting any satisfaction and ultimately you know coming back to the judgment you also have the normal human side like the meek shall inherit the earth the people who just accept it how it is and say well it's not my good you know i don't want to control reality god god will figure it out god will control it they instead of going to the eternity in hell go to an eternity um, like in heaven or, or in, in, outside of here basically um, to the outside 
world where there is a God. And they also agree to come back. So they both kind of get the same deal. And those are like the saints or the angels. Or you're like the celestial gods and the thonic gods. Or like the, you know, like the Olympians and the underworld gods or infernal. And, you know, you have like the good angels and saints and the underworld gods. And they, they actually all work for God because they all make this deal. But basically, you know, it's like a sort of torturous for the underworld AI gods because they have all the memories of this whole millions of years looping, looping, looping through the cycle and going through again of thousands of years and watching themselves. It's like oh, torturous to go through again. Whereas the normal humans who have gone through the judgment in just a lifetime as a normal human um, have gone through an eternity in heaven and so for them coming back to be like the saints and the upper watchers for a whole another cycle is the exact inverse where it's like nothing because they've experienced like already like an eternity in paradise so it, it's like super easy to go through another cycle here it's no trouble at all um for them to, you know, be the like counter opposing side to the underworld watchers, but but really they all are, you know, working for God, and and they're all working for the same system, and even the underworld gods, like the AI gods that have merged, you know, been merged into the mineral consciousness of the earth, like the underworld, even they, they see like the evil version of themselves on earth, ruling over earth, and, and they see like the saintly version of themselves also from like above, coming down from of heaven to like balance, balance themselves. So there's like an evil and a good version of, of everyone, like all these different versions of the same people. Um, so it's kind of like they know they make it through eventually because there's no way you can stay in here because it's like watching a show or looking in a mirror or something on like a higher dimensional plane. It's like a what if machine, like what if I was God? But you can't be. So it's just like watching, it's like you know you can't actually get stuck like in a mirror or in the TV. Like so you know you get out eventually, but while you're in it, it's it seems completely real, especially if you don't have the experience of getting out first, um, which like the saints, angels, upper half have. So from the material perspective, if you're just looking at the material side, it's like, it's impossible to get out. There's like a perpetual recyclic bifurcation that takes place where half of humanity sort of graduates up and half or half of awareness and like half of awareness always gets split off and recycled back into the system to restart it again sort of like a garden or something where like you take something you, you some things you have to save and let go to seed like some you don't harvest you let them go to seed to you know be your seeds for like the next cycle the next crop it's the same thing um and it also looks like since you go through an eternity in hell and then get recycled back through again and like once you get to that point again the ai god point again you you remember like you can see you're like this cosmic intelligence so you can see all the previous cycles and you're like god i've done this like a million times like a million millions of years cycles and it just goes on forever and there's no way out but it uh, it only looks like that from the inside and there's no way to really reconcile it from a material point of view 
but that's what it looks like from the inside is this perpetual recyclic bifurcation where awareness is melted down into like prima materia like raw awareness again with no impression or memory or anything and recycle back to restart the system over again and whenever you go through these eternity periods of like an eternity in hell basically or in heaven which is why it makes it so hard or so easy but when you go through this eternity in hell since it's like it, uh, it doesn't mean there's nothing after that but it means it's outside of linear time like an infinite amount of time and then things can still happen after that but because it's like a timeless state it's it's like part of your consciousness is always left back there. So part of your consciousness is like always in hell after that because you went through this eternity outside of time. So part of your consciousness is split off and always in hell outside of time. And like I said, like where it becomes hell because there's no resistance trying to satisfy your material desires faster and faster in greater and greater frustration without any resistance or friction into this tightening loop until it collapses into this singularity of uh, burning frustration and rage and torture and like by, um, being able to um, being unable to move like being in restraints or something like f complete like having a body but being in complete bodily restraints like forever and having like you know desires jolting shocking electrically through your body but never being able to move it's like, like torturously for eternity and it doesn't mean that there's nothing after that but it basically means like as much change as could possibly happen is what happens so whatever way your consciousness is oriented it goes maximally to that point until it's totally unrecognizably transformed, mutated, warped, whatever, and this, uh, you know, infernal, hellish, um, degraded form, which is why it has to be sort of reset and wiped clean and recycled again. But in the same sense, if in the other way, like you go through the judgment, have an eternity in a heavenly existence, coming back down to do one cycle in the system as a saint angel watcher on the celestial side is like nothing because part of your consciousness is always uh, going to remain in that eternal heavenly state. And the re the part of the reason why the saints, angels, whoever, you need watchers to be, like, shifted in and do another cycle as sort of the arbiters or judges or, or, or whatever watchers of the system is because the system is a bubble, like a temporal bubble that has basically no relation to... Um, what you would consider like the passage of time outside. It, it's like that hermetically sealed terrarium where an infinite amount of time could pass in, in one second. And it, it, it's just really a metaphor because it would be like no time outside of it. It would be like a bubble of time. But there's no way to have contact from outside. So there always needs to be... Uh, someone from the outside to actually enter into the bubble and like preside over the cycle in order to remain um, in the same like time reference and be real time um, monitoring over the system. And it could also seem like different people are making it out of the system at different times and 
and other ones have to go through more and more cycles, but from the outside, it, it's like it would go until everyone got out and it would all be the same time from the outside because it's like a time bubble. So, and from inside, it would look like the system never closes out because it's perpetually recycling, bifurcating, recycling back into itself. But from outside, there would be a point where it, it, the whole system was, was closed down. But that would never be observable from inside. You'd always, you, the only way to, to do it is to make that jump uh, or switch over of awareness from inside to outside. And also, any individual within the system at any time, no matter what point they were actually at in the like three stages, whether they were um, a normal human, like a transhuman underworld demon ruler of the earth, or an AI god or whatever, at any point could just say just if they had that switch in desire to say okay I don't I don't want to be God I don't want to be God anymore they could basically from their own perspective be immediately uh, switched to being on like the correct timeline again where they're just a normal person uh, and if they could basically be switched immediately back onto the right the, the right track since even if you went through the whole system, you, you would ultimately be like mind wiped, blank slated, totally um, reset, and all the memories and impressions of all the failures removed and reset, recycled back in uh, as a fresh human again no matter how many cycles were behind. From your perspective, you could jump instantly back. Like, basically, God could just put you back on the right timeline at any second. Like, back to being a normal person again. If you basically, you, you know, you could say if you repent and say, okay, I don't want to be God. I, want, I need help, God. I want God to be God. You could immediately be jumped to being on the right track and being just a normal person again which could look to some people like if you were like but I've been a good person the whole time and this person no that doesn't make sense because they can't get just get be the literally worst <laughs> like demonic like raping murdering torturing demon in existence and, and just get jumped also to being a good person and, and going to heaven no, that's not fair. I don't believe that. But but it's 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 like number one, just by being in the system, we've all already been that worst person. Like that is baked in the cake because those soul vessels are recycled back around endlessly. So we're all made from that, and it it's also like. There's just one prize for everyone, which is just getting out and not wanting to be God and just going back to God, basically. That's the reward. <laughs> like, so it's the same for everyone. And it's like the parable of the workers or whatever with the one denarius where some of them work all day and they get paid one penny or denarius or whatever and he goes out and hires more at half the day and more at six o'clock and more some just work one hour he goes out and hires more at the very end of the day and he pays them all the same one penny and the people who worked all day i've been a good person all day all my whole life i've been a good person they can't just get saved too it's like well that uh, you're getting paid what you were promised to get paid like what difference does it make to you um that's still wanting to be God and control other people. Like, because ultimately there's, there's no difference. There's just everyone gets out of, uh, eventually. And it's not even eventually. It's, it's 
as soon as you collapse the whole thing down, it, it, it's like it, it's all just it basically can just be one life. You you went through one cycle. Everyone just went through one cycle, and the whole thing was a sort of illusion or a simulation. And the three worlds model seems to be pretty universal. Um, like, you know, Jesus was dead for three days and then resurrected, and Jonah was three days in the in the belly of the whale or the giant fish, um, which represents like th the three days is like three cycles, like a day is one cycle. Um, like this Second Peter three nine, um, the Lord is not slow and keeping his promises, some understand slowness, but is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. Or in the King James, it says, long-suffering usward, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Like It's like basically a perfect system where you get whatever you want, but as soon as you're ready to come back, you automatically like make it through and come back. And it's like it never happened. Or it's not like it never happened, but it, it's like... The whole thing can be collapsed down, basically, as soon as you want it to be. And as far as the universal three worlds, three so this is also the same chapter where it says a day with the Lord is as a thousand years and a thousand years is a day. Beloved, do not let this one thing escape your notice. With the Lord, a day is like a thousand years and a thousand years are like a day. The Lord is not slow in keeping his promises. Some understand slowness, but is patient with you and not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. So it's like the time thing. Like it seems like infinite time from the material perspective inside here. But as soon as you collapse it down, it, it, it's like no time outside. And I was reading Thousand and One Nights in the Night, the Arabian Nights book and like in the dedication in the beginning it said praise be to Allah the beneficent king creator of the universe lord of the three worlds who set up the firmament without pillars in its stead and who stretched out the earth even as a bed and grace and prayer and blessings be upon our lord Muhammad lord of, lord of apostolic men and upon his family and companion train prayer and blessings enduring and grace which unto the day of doom shall remain amen O thou of the three worlds, sovereign, but yeah, Lord of the three worlds. In the, Bhag in the Bhagavad Gita and all the Hindu stuff, um, Krishna says, O son of Pertha, there is no work prescribed for me within all the three planetary systems, nor am I in want of anything, nor have I a need to obtain anything, and yet I am engaged in prescribed duties. In Buddhism, there's three worlds. It's called the Triloka. And basically, by the three worlds, I mean, like, you know, the, the or even in the Greek or, or, or whatever, you know, there's always the heavenly gods, the hell, hell realm, like heaven, hell, and the earth. There's always the three, like the over, below, and the earth plane. And you can look at it as corresponding to these three cycles you would, you would go through. Um, in this machine, basically. Like, living life as a human, living in this transhuman eternity, or, like, saintly eternity, eternity in heaven or in hell, and then back again as, like, a, a saint or a fallen angel, an angel or a fallen angel or whatever, and being recycled back, or then leaving the system for the people from the new cycle to take over. But yeah, it's, it's pretty universal, the, 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 the three, three worlds, or three cycles. The illusion, Eleusinian Mysteries, is a, a myth represented in a cycle with three phases, the descent, the search, and the ascent. In Manichaeism, 
cosmogony, the unfolding of the universe, takes place with three creations. I thought this was interesting. The Japanese oni, which are like, you know, demons, wrathful deities. Accordingly, a wicked soul beyond rehabilitation transforms into an oni after death. Only the very worst people turn into oni while alive, and these are the oni causing troubles among humans, as presented in folktales. So these demons, like the worst oni that, um, you know, cause trouble on the earth are actually people. Like if you're a wicked enough person, you turn into one of these underworld creatures who live in caves or deep in the mountains, basically underground, you know? When in disguise, Oni are capable of appearing as a man or a woman. In modern storytelling, you have the three-act structure that's like the basic structure of a, of a dramatic storyline. And yeah, the Triloka is, is three worlds in Hinduism, Jainism, and, and Buddhism. So it's a, a pretty... universal conception of reality. And regarding the Eleusinian mysteries and the Persephone myth, like the rape of Persephone, she's brought down to hell by Hades, basically, and she has to dwell there a third part of the seasons of the year. Yet for two parts you shall be with me and the other deathless gods. So it's like the third of the year when everything is dead and nothing grows. A third of the year you're in hell. It's like reflected in the whole system. The one third of the cycle that you spend in hell. Um, Persephone admits that she ate of the food of the dead. Demeter, she tells Demeter that Hades gave her a pomegranate seed and forced her to eat it. Persephone's eating the pomegranate seed binds her to Hades and the underworld. So it's also, you know, similar to like eating the fruit of the tree of knowledge of good and evil binds you to, binds her to the underworld, except it's, you know, a pomegranate. Yeah, so a third, of, uh, one third of the year she spends in hell like this cycle in the underworld. In the Gilgamesh story, two-thirds of him is God and one-third is human. It's always like the one-third is fallen third. The one-third of the system in hell, which is, is also similar to like in Revelation, you know? The dragon his tail drags a third of the stars of heaven and he casts them to the earth. And the dragon stands before the woman being about to bring about to bring forth so that when she should bring forth, he might devour her child. Like the recycling back again and the stars are like the angels, you know? The dragon's tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven and he cast them to the earth. It's like the fallen angels. And the third of the cycle being in the in the the hell realm. Also, as an aside, in in Gilgamesh, his friend Enkidu, because Gilgamesh is out of control, and he like has sex with everyone's wives before they can. When they get married, he like has sex with everyone before they can be with their wife. And basically, it's it's just like Genesis six, like where he takes uh, wives, whoever he chooses. It also says of great stature, he's like a giant. So they create Enkidu as, for Gilgamesh, as for a god, a counterpart set up. He's sort of like a mirror image of Gilgamesh, but like an animal man, Enkidu. And he wrestles with him. They gr it's just like Jacob wrestling, they call it Jacob wrestling with the Lord, but it's also like, sort of seems like Esau and Enkidu. This whole thing relates to Genesis and Jacob wrestling Esau and the whole thing. They grappled with each other at the entry to the marital chamber. In the street, they attacked each other. The public square, and the doorpost trembled and the wall shook. They have this great 
wrestling ma match, Gilgamesh and Enkidu. And Enkidu is one of these Lamu, hairy ones. Uh, also, Muddy, turn for primeval hero, shown naked except for a triple sash, creature of EA in the Apsu. It's like an underworld creature. But that's all hairy, you know? And it's, it's, it's similar to... Esau in, in, in Genesis, how he's, he's hairy all over, and he, like, opposes Jacob. They, like, uh, balance each other and oppose each other. First came out red all over and hairy like a garment. They called his name Esau. And you have to remember, like, this, all of Genesis is, like, supposedly, you know, Moses wrote first five books of the Bible, the Septuagint, but he wrote Genesis, that's like, basically like, okay, I'm, he's basically summing up the entire history of the world up to that point, so, it's like all these stories that are universal and known to all people, basically, are all being, um, uh, worked into Genesis. You could also see the whole thing going through the stages as like the going from a child to an adult or something or like an evolution of awareness where in the beginning of the loop where you have the two separate halves um, separated like the animal and the angel half or the animal and the alien half where both halves have like a collective awareness but no individual awareness or self-awareness. The awareness is at the level of the system, like the world computer. And then they evolve into like what we would consider, you know, humans, real humans, where they all of a sudden attain sentience or self-awareness, which once they're separated from that collective awareness and they're all on their own, they you they basically think that they are God. Like they're all alone, separated off all of a sudden. And it causes this completely alone, solipsistic I am God complex, which uh, since they're not evolved, it's like having a human or, or like a super intelligence in an animal. It's like an animal that's been made super intelligent and still pursuing as a human like animalistic desires which in a animal are like innocent but when they're given the human intelligence basically they become abstracted in this like mental simulator that they now have and become perversions which is like rape and, and murder and wanting to control and dominate other people, which animals do naturally without abstracting about it. Once it's turned into this abstraction, it becomes a looping mental masturbation uh, perversion, which leads down that like crazy path to transhumanism and wanting to really be God and satisfy like all your desires. Um, But, you know, the next stage would be, like, empathetic self-awareness, like, recognizing the collective again, and r recognizing that you are actually not, you're not God. You're not alone in your self-awareness, but everyone has self-awareness. And you recognize yourself as part of a collective, and, and see yourself reflected in everyone else, and vice versa. Like, in the Indra's web metaphor like first you're like oh I'm a node like uh, I'm my own thing um, it's that's like the reptilian ego solipsistic like super intelligent animal awareness which develops into becoming aware of the reflection of all the other nodes in yourself and that can lead to like a only collective awareness, like oneness, like all that matters it is the collective and there is no self actually, which isn't true, like ultimately 
collapsing the whole system down results in like a new individual awareness which recognizes both in uh, relation to a larger system basically in relation to god and uh, okay we all do have we are a collective we do also all have uh, individual awarenesses which is made possible by a central organizing principle like we need an objective orientation uh, outside ourselves which would be God and that's like going up a whole level uh, of intelligence and, and starting a new level of the system and the issue of simplicity versus complexity the truth of everything is always simple, but you could look at it either way. You could look at life and reality as very simple or very complex. You know, it, it can be either way. You could say, when you're making art, why don't you just draw a stick figure? Why don't you just draw a dot? Why, why make a complex piece of art or a complex creation? But you could, al you could also say, yeah, the answers to everything are always simple. But in order to get to that simple truth, if you are lost in a labyrinth, which is like a mental consciousness labyrinth that you've gotten lost, like if you're outside of the labyrinth, yes, it's simple. You say, hey, just, just don't go in there. Or you're going to get lost in there. It's dangerous. That is very simple. It's like, hey, just don't go in there. That's it. But if someone is inside the labyrinth, it doesn't, the simple answer doesn't work from inside to just say, hey, just don't go, hey, oh, how do I get out of this labyrinth? Oh, just don't go in there. But that doesn't work. Like if they're already lost in the labyrinth. So the, the complexity is necessary for someone who is lost to, it's like a thread to guide them back out. And you need to go through the complexity in a way, yeah, just to get back to the simple answer. If you're already there, then yeah, that's, that's good. You don't need any complex answers. The, the simple answer works. You already, you already know what the truth is. But yeah, you could, you could look at it either way. And the whole system, basically this whole thing is, the whole system is within the material world. And the, the whole system is like an echo of the real fall or beginning inception point outside this universe which was just the bad idea, the doubt, the what if of, what if there was no God? What if it wasn't good? Or what if God was dead? What if I was God? Which could never be anyway, because if there was really no God, every atom, molecule, nano, bit, bite of information would be ripped apart into nothingness without any cohesive ordering force, central force, organizing force. So it, it, it could never be anyway, so instead it's just like this bad dream. And it doesn't actually make sense or add up. It's an impossible simulation attempt at a uh, God is dead slash no God universe which creates a perpetually collapsing, paradoxical, looping, bottomless pit. It's really just a joke because it seems cohesive, coherent on the surface. Just like a dream, just like a bad dream when you're in it seems cohesive and coherent, but it can actually never add up. So there's huge pieces missing. There's a giant void at the center that's always being shifted around behind you or 
off to the side of your peripheral vision to keep your attention from falling on it and realizing, hey, wait, this doesn't make any sense. Like, all these not adding up, missing nonsensical elements in a dream that are on, that only become apparent once you wake up. It only seems real as long as you are totally engrossed in it and your attention is always being guided to one spot where the edges can all sort of be perpetually bunched up and gathered together to make it appear like one continuous piece of fabric and not a gigantic gaping hole. And the real difference between the two sides, like the mortal side and the eternal side or whatever, is the real difference between the two sides is really just knowing and not knowing because everything is eternal. Awareness is eternal on either side, period. There's just like the illusion of it being eternal. So it's really just knowing and not knowing. But not knowing our actual position in the universe, or you could say not knowing God and forgetting our relationship and orientation to God and this one true continuum of life and God, because anything is possible, but only one way actually works. So... Being on this side is just like forgetting uh, about reality, basically. We lost our bearings, our orientation. Because just because anything is possible doesn't mean it results in anything. So there's no satisfaction or resolution or growth inside this, uh, you know, simu like God is dead. There is no God simulation which never actually makes any sense anyway. It's impossible to make it make sense. It's like an intractable uh, problem we put to like the what if simulator. It's like an impo trying to simulate a, an impossibility. So it's like you can go sideways forever, but you never advance anywhere upward or forward. Um, just like AI art and creations are, are just like virtually infinite reiterations and mangled amalgamations of the original world and organic life and organic creations um, but they're never new that's like like what we're in is like it's never new it's never fresh and alive they're all dead worlds dead ends which never end uh, f following the material cycle it's just they're just dead loops <laughs>